Dagoberto Gill. His books, Woodcuts of Women, uh, Magic of Blood, are both banned in Tucson Unified School District right now. And um, I had the pleasure of bringing him. I guess we crossed state lines. Maybe FBI issues were involved. No sé, but <laughs> we brought him out to uh, the Houston Community College, and he gave an amazing talk. And you know, um, I'm going to tell you what he said. But you know, you know what's going on, really? If you are from mainstream society and you are mediocre, you can lead a very nice life. For our young, we've got to be extraordinary to survive. And if you're here right now, if you're on this campus, you're extraordinary. You've passed so many tests that no one else has to go through. And I think what's going to happen is, between all of us, we're going to change that. What Dagoberto Gil was telling my, my students, he reminded us that no other country has community colleges. Secondly, he got a D in English. <laughs> I said, like, what? He's now published in the New Yorker and Harper's at the same time. Um, it, his last collection, um, Before the End, After the Beginning, really has one of the most beautiful, uh, beautiful critical analyses from the New York Times, which they've not, they've not done a lot towards Mexican-American writers. Um, and I think it's very powerful that that's happening on our watch. Having said that, I know that the most salacious component of House Bill 2811 which is what Arizona legislators passed, there are three components you keep hearing about. The three components are, they will prohibit courses that, one, promote overthrow the government. By the way, I've read House on Mango Street probably five times. Didn't see that section. <laughs> Esperanza is like, and then we overthrow the government. <laughs> Didn't see that. <laughs> Second component, um, courses that treat individuals as a group, I guess there goes British literature, but okay, so, I mean, so you cannot do that. Also, third group that causes resentment. <laughs> now, those have been reported as the more salacious elements of House Bill 2811. What's not as overtly reported, if you keep reading down the slow, and again, they can mince words and say, no, it's not a ban, that's fine. You want to use the word prohibited? When you prohibit alcohol, alcohol is banned. It's prohibited. <laughs> so if you look at the, prohib the prohibition, the criteria for prohibition, keep reading. And this is why, exactly like you're saying, Tucson created a template for their anti-immigration laws. Alabama followed suit. Georgia followed suit. Mississippi, we just heard yesterday, has passed another draconian anti-immigrant law. If this prohibition of Latino studies is allowed to stand in Arizona, it will become the template. I guarantee you the other ethnic, ethnic studies programs will fall as well, and other states will jump on this bandwagon like you alluded to. Having said that, if you read the law, Clause E11 points out this shall not affect Native American courses because they are mandated by, fed by federal law. Of course, they still got Sherman Alexi. You know, <laughs> I'm not sure how that happened. And if you keep reading further, they go out of their way to tippy-toe around some of the other protected groups. It almost sounds as if they engineered this law, probably over a decade, a decade, engineered a law to come after Latino studies. And again, let me tell you another author who's banned. It is critical theory. I was in the NALA Rep conference. We're talking about the evolution of pedagogy and critical race theory is powerful. And I've been talking with Delgado, they donate, they wrote a check, they sent books, they're coming to Tucson. But if you read the book, this is why, you know, the Arizona authorities weren't scared that we would overthrow the government with violence. They know that we will overhaul the system with brilliance. That's what they wanted to prevent. That's what they wanted to prevent. And just like it says in the book, Civil rights, uh, civil rights advances are countered by the system then whittling away at those rights at other levels of government. And here we see a school board whittling away at the rights that so many people fought so hard for over many, many years. And uh, just to give you a kind of fuller picture as well, um, of course, 
the, the teachers and students sued the government. So right now, there are 16 teachers. And mind you, uh, if you see the film Precious Knowledge, you'll see a couple of these young teachers, Sean Arce uh, or también Curtis Acosta. Curtis Acosta is locked in litigation. He still has to teach. He still has to walk into that classroom and teach the class that was replaced, that replaced Latino studies. So overnight, he's got to come up with a new curriculum. And on top of that, he's got an eight-year-old son. He's getting a PhD. And again, I have no doubt that this will not pass Supreme Court scrutiny, but then we've got to wait three to five years for that to happen, and that's a whole generation of high school kids. And these same high school kids también who are getting activated, not only did they have to undergo this trauma, they still have to pass. They still have to pass these classes. And on top of that, um, when you meet Nicolas, they're organizing teach-ins. One of the groups he worked with is uh, Tucson High Mecha. They're organizing teach-ins, they're supporting each other, and I'm sorry, he's still an 18-year-old young man. Relationships, part-time jobs, all that regular stuff. Very well composed. Like you were saying earlier, Libro uh, Traficante High Tech Aztec was saying, these kids are gonna be like chingones. I mean, son chingones, yeah, but I'm like, man, you know, it's, it's, just, it's, a, it's a prophecy that we're gonna see happen on our, on our, uh, on our watch.